we're now going to talk about key blocking operators in Project Reactor's mono class. These operators can be used to have a calling thread block awaiting for a mono to emit its value. And typically this mono will be running asynchronously in a different thread of control than the calling thread. The two operators we're gonna take a look at are block and block optional. And as we'll see, there's several variants of each of these operators we're going to explore. The block operator will be our first focus. This operator subscribes to a mono and then blocks or waits until the next signal is received. It returns the value received or it'll return null if the mono completes empty. If the mono errors, then the original exception is going to be thrown. If the exception that's thrown is a checked exception, then this will be wrapped up into a Java runtime exception. There's also another variant of block that will block until the next signal is received or a timeout expires. If the provided timeout expires, then a runtime exception will be thrown. You should use this operator primarily if there's no other way to continue to proceed without having the value that's emitted by the mono. So let's take a look at a simple example here. We're gonna have two big fractions and we're going to go ahead and then multiply them in a background thread. You can see here that we use the mono from callable factor method operator, and then we use the subscribe on operator to have that computation run in a single background thread. And then the caller will call block, the calling thread will call block, and that will block the calling thread until the multiplications of the asynchronous operations and objects occur in the background. And then we go ahead and print the result out. So nothing gets done. The, the control flow will not continue in the calling thread until block returns with its value. RxJava has a blocking get operator in its single class that's very similar to this. You can see here that it's called blocking get instead of block, but it can be used in exactly the same way. You can go ahead and have a single from callable operation that will multiply two big fractions together in a background thread, in a single background thread, and then we'll call blocking get to block the calling thread until the background operation completes. There's actually a similar operation in Java's completable futures framework as well. And that's the join method defined on the completable future class. As you can see here, we could go ahead and do multiplication in the background using the completable future supply async factor method. And then we use the join operation to wait for the computation to run in the background. So all kind of variations on the same theme. Block optional is another operator we're going to cover. Like block, it subscribes to the mono and then blocks until a next signal receives is received or until the mono completes empty. Now, what's returned here is an optional, and it's probably worth taking a moment just to re-explain what an optional is. An optional is an interesting class that was added to Java 8, which allows us to work around some limitations with earlier versions of Java. And we'll talk about what those limitations are in a second. So you oftentimes have various resources that may or may not exist. So you might have a computer that would have a sound card or would not have a sound card or some computing device that would or would not have a sound card. So if you have an optional, then either you can have a sound card, in which case you can get that sound card back by using various calls on the optional object, or you could have an empty optional in which certain methods would just become no ops. You can basically use this to replace the empty case, in other words, when there's nothing there, by throwing an exception, using the or else throw method, or you can also return a default value by using the optional or else or, or else get methods. So these are just different ways of giving default values or throwing exceptions if the optional doesn't actually have a value present at any given point in time. Why do we do this? The main goal of having optional is to eliminate the need for handling the dreaded Java null pointer exception, which is the bane of many Java programs because we often forget that null can come back from calls and then we end up forgetting to check for null and we end up making method calls on the nulls and the program crashes and the exception is thrown and it's bad news. So by using optional correctly, you no longer have to deal with null pointer exceptions. As with block, there's also a version of block optional that will block until the next signal is received or a timeout expires. So very much the same kind of idea. As before with block for block optional, if the provided timeout does indeed expire, then a runtime exception will be thrown. As with block, block optional should really only be used if you absolutely need a value before proceeding. We like to try to minimize the use of blocking 
in reactive code because it impedes the inherent parallelism in the system and makes things less reactive and responsive, which is a problem. Here's an example where we're going to have something very similar to what we did before, where we're going to have a couple of big fractions we want to multiply together, and we're going to multiply them in a background thread that's returned from schedulers.single. And then we're going to use block optional to basically wait until those computations are done, assuming that they finish successfully. As you can see, what's returned there is an optional to a big fraction. And then down below in the, the print line statement, we're going to go ahead and use the map operator on the optional to, to go ahead and convert the big fraction to a mixed string if, in fact, we got a valid result. Otherwise, we're just going to print out the or else parameter error, indicating that something went wrong. We'll talk more about this example and other examples using block and timed block when we take a look at the case study that's the end that is at the end of this lesson. There is interestingly no direct equivalent in RxJava for block optional, which perhaps isn't too surprising because our project reactor was built with Java 8 features in mind, like optional, whereas RxJava was really targeted for earlier versions of Java. And since optional didn't come in until Java 8, they probably saw no reason to add it with those earlier versions of Java. You can use blocking get in much the same way as you could use block optional. However, you could get nulls back, which is what block optional is trying to avoid. And again, this is very similar to completable future join. Completable future join, for various reasons, does not have a timeout mechanism where both block optional and block do. So that's the end of our discussion of blocking operators in the mono class. Once again, we, we don't use them very much in practice, but it's good to know of their existence. And we do use them in our test programs for the case studies when we want to wait for all the other threads to finish running in the background so the calling thread doesn't exit until all the asynchronous tasks are finished.